What's up guys, today I got you another awesome innovative product from this company named Inki. This is the uh, GC60D5 and I also have the bicolor version which is the GC60X5. So I'm going to be actually including everything that you want to know, especially since this thing is a battery operated unit. When I'm going on a paid shoot that nothing can be interrupted, I need to know everything what this light is going to do and behave on a set before I even try to use anything else. So I'm going to cover everything here, so stay tuned going to wear a bra bag. And a quick disclaimer, Inky sent me these slides for me to test it out. I don't get paid to say anything here. This video is not sponsored by them and all my words and opinions that are my own. And this video is unbiased towards this company. Whatever I don't like, I will say here. The only thing that I don't know why it would cost another $100 extra just for a small soft box, but this is actually the only difference between the standard kit and the pro kit. So the first thing that I do here, whether they send me something to review or something that I purchase, the first thing that I want to know upon after unboxing these items, can I actually trust this item in case I actually have a shoot, something that cannot be interrupted, such as anything regarding a wedding or a corporate video or an interview. The talent is actually speaking something so important that you can't duplicate that. So with all that said, this light I believe I can trust because I actually made tests before I actually reviewed this product here regarding how long the battery lasts. And to keep the video going, I'm going to be uh, placing all the specifications here. So you welcome to pause the video and see everything they want to look at there. CRI, TSCI, or lumens and other good stuff. This is a very nice charger which can be useful for so many other devices. And this is the actual input right there, up to 100 watts. It comes also with this cable, USB-C on both ends. It also comes with a mini bonus reflector. It also comes with this little pouch here and you can actually do this here, but I don't think that's gonna be offering much protection for a light like this. So before you expose this equipment into rain or any sort of water, make sure this is fully inserted right here. So the only con that I actually have regarding this item is not the item itself, it's the fact that, you know, this item is not that cheap, it's not too expensive either, but, you know, you need something that requires some care because the pouch that comes included with this item, it's not going to cut it because this whole thing is aluminum, it's rather heavy, about two pounds, I would say. So if you accidentally hit the pouch, you know, in a corner there, it's going to rip through the uh, pouch. So I don't know why they don't include the case for something like this here because you're going to be having to house the reflectors to make sure nothing touches anything thing and to keep this light beautiful the way it is here instead of premature scratches and stuff like that so every time I find something that does not come with the case I have to go to Amazon and spend like an hour to find something like this here nowadays everybody seems to be wanting to travel light and this is actually the uh, most innovative product after the Zoom the X100 and the G200 series which is designed for maximum portability so everything is lightweight and compact and this one here is no exception this one features a mini bone mount a full bonus capability as you can see all you have to do is to swing this out here and it becomes a full-size bonus mount and everything that you see here the light itself from top to bottom front to back there's not one single piece of plastic here other than this ring that you can actually control the light everything is made of aluminum and the front piece here also comes with a bonus lock which means your modifier is not going to slip away it doesn't mean you can actually shake this thing all over the place because this will eventually come off here, which is not meant for that. You're supposed to set this on a stand and forget about it. You can also move this around in case you are on mobility, such as a wedding, shooting the bride outside. As long as you don't shake this off here, this will always stay here. And as you can see, there's a ton of holes here, 3 8 and quarter 20, so you can pretty much mount anything that you like on this particular device here. One cool thing is that the front of this slide, you're gonna find four quarter 20 threads, which means as long as you have the device that has you know the uh, both male threads here you can actually stack them on top or even on the side here as long as you're using the reflector or bare bulb to increase the power times two times three or times four which is pretty cool on the very back here it features a little space for a little lanyard if you want to carry this as a flashlight which by the way it can be also very useful as an emergency flashlight because this thing is going to run two hours at a hundred percent power which by the way the actual gauge here that measures by the minute just like your cell phone does i found it to be very accurate it's just 
isolate a minute or two. A battery operated unit, I found that it is extremely crucial and important to find out what this thing is gonna do because the last thing they want to do is to actually take this thing on a pay job, again, with something that cannot be interrupted and suddenly you run out of light, right? And then everybody's gonna be looking at you like, you know, what's going on, what happened? And this is the very type of information that you're not going to find in any other video regarding this slide here because I'm gonna show you guys in detail everything regarding everything that's happening in the back here, especially regarding battery, how long this thing is gonna last and all that good stuff. So right now I'm doing a test to show you guys how very accurate this timer is. So right now, the current charge is 56%, that doesn't matter right now. What matters is the rundown time right here, how much time you have left with this battery, and the percentage doesn't matter either. So right now I'm cranking it up to 100% just to show you guys the time going a little faster, and I'm going to speed up the video here. I just want you guys to see how very closely accurate this is with this clock right here. So you can actually already see how accurate that is. One minute, eight seconds, one minute, eight seconds here. I have this timer on a countdown mode. So as you can see, you can actually trust this battery is 100%. The difference in time between this one and this actual clock here is negligible. So it's pretty much up to par, only like 30 seconds to a minute off. If you are shooting something that cannot be interrupted, such as an interview, if you are outdoors, make sure you stop using the light and recharge it again within an hour and a half or an hour and 40 minutes because when the battery reaches about 25%, 20%, the brightness is going to drop to a maximum of you know, 20% or 30% or whatever, just to keep that in mind. Or make sure you have that plugged in. If you are shooting outdoors, you can actually bring a power bank that features a AC adapter. But again, to keep that in mind, if you're only on battery within an hour and a half, an hour and 40 minutes, stop filming. Otherwise, you're gonna have to up your ISO to compensate the same brightness you were filming before. I have the light set to 1% now, so it tells me that I have about 24 hours of shooting. And then at uh, this particular percentage here, like 30%, for example, it tells me that I have about three hours and 23 minutes. And going back to 100%, it goes back to an hour and an hour, 59 minutes, there you go. Very accurate. When this company reached out to me and decided to send me one light, since they actually make both, I actually told them to send me two lights because I would like to show you guys what the differences are between the uh, bicolor and the daylight. So the price between the bicolor and the daylight is exactly the same, so the only difference is brightness and the fact that this is going to be only daylight and this is going to be bicolor. So as you expect, because the cop chip here has to be sharing two LEDs, the warm and 50% warm and 50% uh, daylight. And this one here, the entire cop chip is daylight. Therefore, this one is going to be brighter. However, this is more convenient because if you have to actually choose the color temperature, you wanna choose this one here. But don't forget, this is actually slightly less bright than the daylight here. Or if you're in a mood to buy both, just in case you need whatever feature. So, you know, you already know what they do. Right now what we're looking at on the left is the daylight version and on the right is the bicolor version. And as you can see, they're both set to 100%. And this one here also set to 100% and 5600 degrees Kelvin. And I measured these two lights carefully. They're exactly three feet away from the background here. Exactly three feet away. So right now I'm gonna reset my meter. The ISO right now doesn't matter. The only thing they wanna pay attention to is the f-stop difference. Eleven point four, technically eleven and a half. And this one here, eleven point zero. So this one here is daylight only, and the difference is almost a half a stop difference compared to the bicolor. And the bicolor, you have the convenience of bicolor. Therefore, you're gonna be having slightly less brightness, which is only a half a stop. So you decide between the bicolor version or the daylight version. So right now I'm going to be doing a test with this light set to 6,500 degrees Kelvin and to see what we get here. 11.1. Now let's see what happens at 3200 degrees Kelvin. So 0.2 stop difference down. And right now I have the light set to 4200 degrees Kelvin. And the reading is this, 11. 
Now let's remove the reflectors and see what kind of brightness we have. So they're both set to 5600 degrees Kelvin and the reading is F56 and again at ISO 200. And this one almost F56, interesting. So I'm going to show here real quick. ISO 100, get this. 200, you get this here. ISO 400 and 800, you get almost F11 without the reflector. And with the reflector, just for fun, ISO 400, you get this, and ISO 800, you get this. And what they did in the back, as far as settings goes, how to adjust the color temperature, brightness, effects, and everything, which of course, these lights do come with effects, is a very interesting science here. So you have to rotate these knobs here in a certain way to either access the color temperature, brightness, or the effects, which I'm gonna show you guys, turn this thing around here and show you guys in detail everything you should know about everything that's going on on this display. But of course, you can actually operate this light using the app, which I'm gonna show you guys what name, what app to download, don't worry about it. And I'm also gonna be showing you guys everything regarding the app because sometimes when I look at my algorithm, I actually get a little confused because some videos, you guys watch the entire app tutorial and some other models you guys just skip it all together. So I'm actually very confused. So I don't know if I actually should continue to show this or not. But for this particular one here, you don't want to skip that because I had a little bit of a hard time pairing the light. It's actually a very easy procedure, but it requires a little bit of fitness to do that. So make sure you watch this tutorial. I will be as brief as I possibly can. And also other things in the app that you might need a little bit of a help because there's no manual on the actual app itself. So I'm going to be explaining to you guys everything. All right, here's the back of the unit. This is something that you do want to pay attention to. So to turn on the light, which means you gotta unlock first because the advantage of this is when you're actually air traveling or if we have this in a bag, this is never going to be turned on and ignite something on fire inside your bag. So, so you're gonna unlock by rotating this several times. And then there you go. And here's your brightness levels from 1% increments, very fast all the way to 100%, or very slowly again. This is gonna vibrate a lot, so sorry about that. Now to access the uh, light mode and effects mode, you have to squeeze this real tight and then rotate to the left and hold it. There you go. So if it fails the first time, you get the grip of it. You keep trying, you will master the stuff. If you take too long, you see the, uh, the thing goes away. So again, squeeze it real hard to the left. And there you go. Now you have M1, M2. These are the effects, right? And then this is the light mode right here, M1. Then wait a few seconds. Then it goes away. Now to access the color temperature, same thing, squeeze really hard and then turn to the right. And then it has to be very quickly, otherwise this information is going to disappear. So you can actually run from 2700 degrees Kelvin all the way to 6500 degrees Kelvin. Now these numbers are really tiny, so I have to actually point with the pen here. So right here is the battery gauge and the battery status in percentage, the current voltage that it is, and how much time you have at, for example, 7%. So if you actually crank this up to 100%, the battery is not fully charged. So it's gonna give me about an hour and 28 minutes. When you charge the battery in full to 100%, you're going to have two hours of runtime. Now one thing to pay attention here, for example, let's say that you're doing an interview and running this light forever with the battery, as soon as the battery reaches about 15 or 20 percent, you are no longer able to run this light at 100 percent. It's going to drop to 50 percent. That's also good to save the battery. This is why engineers do this here. You can't kill the battery with the thing at 100 percent. Then when the battery is at 10 percent, the power is going to be no more than 20 percent, just to keep that in mind. So the safe thing to do with this light for a continuous interview, something that's very important that you cannot interrupt or stop, so if you're running on battery mode, keep that in mind. When the light reaches about 15, 20%, just beware of the 100% because it's not gonna let you do that. Over here, the M1 means that you are on regular lighting mode, no effects. This is the current temperature inside what the light is doing. And here's the current color temperature, 6,500 degrees Kelvin. So when you plug this in here, you watch the wattage growing. When the battery is about this much charge, it's going to use the full 100 watts close to like 96 watts. 
and then it stabilizes at 95, 96 watts here. And this is the current and the actual amperage that the charger is utilizing. Half of this light is the actual battery, so it is normal when you touch and it's actually rather warm, whether you're charging or using the light. Now to lock the light, start turning to the left until you reach 0% and then one more time, and then you lock the light, but you did not turn off the light. So to completely turn off the light, make sure the green goes all the way to the end, and then you definitely shut off the light. And this is the current software version right there. When you have the charger plugged in, this is not gonna turn off. When you unplug it, and then the display goes away. Currently, there's no way to update the firmware we're using the application, so I actually have to use the computer for that. You actually go to the website, download the program for either Mac or Windows, and then you're probably going to ask the manufacturer to send you the file because I'm not sure if the file is actually there. So I actually requested the file and updated this light. Just in case something like this happens to you, in case when you're actually unlocking the light, you see some hard yellow lines and the padlock appears yellow, it means you have a firmware or software problem. So my software was actually out of date. Just in case you receive your light, don't panic. All you have to do is to update the firmware, so I actually emailed the manufacturer. Now, the actual firmware, you have to ask the manufacturer, which I did. So they emailed the uh, attachment there, and I actually uploaded the firmware and installed it. Now, I've seen on the description of these items on b and and Amazon and some other YouTubers that they say this actually is a waterproof unit. I don't blame them because, again, on the description on Amazon and b and it says that it is waterproof. So I don't think this unit is waterproof. I actually emailed back the manufacturer and they actually told me this is actually water resistant as I suggested or suspected. So don't submerge this light because this is not made for that. Two things that people often get confused. One is waterproof versus water resistant and the other one is soundproof or sound treatment or acoustic treatment. They are not the same. Even though the manufacturer shows this light covered in rain, it splashes and all, there are IPX ratings to be observing. So IPX9, for example, is fully immersible. You can actually fully immerse this underwater, but this is not the case with this light because of the fan here. So exposing this light to rain, I would be guessing this would be rated as an IPX4, which means you actually have to tilt the light slightly, so the gravity will help repel light from entering the very core of the fan here. Everything in the back may be water sealed, weather sealed, but I don't know about the fan here, so this is what concerns me a little bit. And also the fact that we actually have a USB-C here and the little gummy thing that's not gonna help much. And they're actually kind enough to supply another two pieces just in case you lose one, because it is actually very easy to actually knock this off here. So again, just drop this slightly at this angle and it should be good to go. The number one and obvious thing regarding feature of this light as far as compatibility goes and also how cute it can be with the little bonus mount here, the fact that you can actually expand to a full size. And again, since this is actually made of metal, you can put a huge modifier here and this thing will take it. It's not gonna droop. It has metal teeth here, so when it stops right here, you will hold it. But I actually was very surprised the fact that I actually placed a uh, almost nearly four feet wide soft box in here and it was enough to do an interview on a small room even with that modifier, so very nice. But since we're talking about portability here, you might want to either stick with the soft box that they actually provide with the Pro Kit or any modifier about 24 to 28 inches. There should be plenty of size here to accommodate a portable set. If we start to put in giant soft box here, you're going to defeat slightly the purpose of portability, right? So here's the actual light that can easily hold a soft box this heavy. So all I have to do is to press this pin here and Everywhere you leave, it's gonna stay, it's not gonna droop. Now, when you actually raise and lower the stand, take it easy on uh, bumps like this. Just do it very gently because of common sense, right? So if you wanna change the angle here, the maximum angle that you can actually do is full horizontal, as you can see here, or it can go all the way down like this here. So pretty much anywhere that you set, it will stay. So once you mount the soft box, there's a little safety pin that you just slide towards the bonus mount so the soft box will not rotate. And to remove, it's so easy, you just unlash the thing, twist it a little bit, and it's out. So I'm gonna show you guys how powerful this little thing can be. So I'm gonna be turning my key light away from here. Now everything is dark and I'm gonna be placing in real time the soft box right here, off the shot, off the frame. 
And this is what you get at about four feet away. I'm completely blown out and my ISO is set to 800. The aperture is f4, which is a very dark lens. And the shutter is 1 60th of a second and the frame rate is 30 frames per second. So let me give you an idea what's going on here. ISO 800, the same settings that I just mentioned. So here's the light at 100%. I'm actually controlling the light using the app here. So dropping it down all the way to 50%, I'm still overexposed. And the soft box is about four feet away from me. I can touch the soft box. And let's try about 30%. No, still about 25%. That should look right. So right now I'm going to be turning off these blue lights here so nothing interferes with anything. So, okay. So what if you actually had a scenario with a large room? So you're going to be having to place the talent a little bit more far away here. Right now, I would say I'm at least eight feet away from the soft box. I double the distance. And this is what you get with this particular little light with a huge modifier. So I think as far as portability goes, it's a 10 plus to me. And the fact that you can actually mount a regular big soft box with this little thing here. I think that's awesome. So if you're interested in purchasing this soft box from them, this is what it looks like. It comes with the case and the actual soft box is aside. And yes, it features a grid as well. The best way to remove the soft box out of here without breaking any rods, remove this first and not the other way. The soft box will also let you rotate this ring right here. And as you can see, most of the components here are made of plastic and you don't want to break that, right? So I'm going to be teaching you guys the best way to do this here. So when there's no pressure, you can go ahead and start assembling the soft box. And you want to grab this with a thumb here as close as possible to the actual thing here, because over here you might bend the rod, right? So you start building it, go ahead, nice and easy. And then as you do this here, you're going to be building some pressure here. So when you actually halfway stop, and you come here and you're going to now bend the soft box, which reduces the tension right here. So bend and then keep going, bend again and again. So this way is actually effortless. So you don't break anything. And there you go. Just in case some of these rods here, they don't seem to want to cooperate or they don't actually stop where they should, don't worry about it. You keep working on the other ones and then you come back to that and then it will finally snap in place. There are two diffusers with the soft box here. I actually place them very close to each other. So the other one is right behind here, as you can see, it's right behind because usually this goes uh, over here, but all they supplied here were these two modifiers, which they are the same size or the size that goes in the front. And also don't forget to leave space for the grid. So here's a soft box, very nice and neat. Now to break this down is the same exact procedure because right now there's a lot of tension on these rods here. So even though you can actually press this button like this here, you are going to probably break the soft box. Not only this brand, most soft boxes, they are made this way here. Okay, so what you want to do is to make sure you actually lift it up right here at the same time you press this button that way. So you actually release the first rod. So up and then press the button. You don't even hear a click. This is how soft and gentle everything is because if you do this here, you're gonna break something. Don't do that. So you're gonna be coming back here Preferably with a rug because the concrete floor here, the soft box is going to slide all over the place. So make sure you bend this really good like this here. And then you start to undo the whole thing. Bend it again. And when you're actually halfway, there is not enough tension here anymore. And then you can easily undo everything. But again, make sure you actually lift this up and then you slide the button that way. You know, the last clicks you hear, it means you're doing it right. So instead of this here, just try to do this. Silence. And then you put the soft box away, tucking the Velcros this way here. I've seen some people on set, they actually undo the whole thing. You don't have to remove the diffusers. You just punch it in slightly and gently, and then you just hug the whole thing this way. And then you simply put it back in the case. Now, before you touch this diffuser here, make sure you wash your hands, make sure your hands are clean because even though this is a brand new diffuser, 
Anything that you put in front of the cob chip lights, you're going to alter the color temperature because that's the nature of physics. This is going to be changing the color temperature no matter how accurate this light is. And if you actually let this become dirty, you're going to drastically change the color temperature to a warmer color. So try to keep this as clean as possible. Now to deal with the grid, I always recommend that you save this little plastic thing going on here to avoid, you know, pet hair and dust or debris that you don't want to hear, right? And also you notice there's very little space here on the actual Velcro left for you to install the grid and this is why they actually made the grid with the Velcro on the side here instead of in the middle. So when you actually install the grid right here, it still fits very nicely. The best way to fold this grid is to put against a flat and clean surface such as a table or even a clean floor but a table is more recommended so all you have to do is to roll it this way here and then it goes back on the plastic. So here's just me arriving on the shoot here so let's do this thing again and see how little time it takes right. Then you start to bend it, bend it again. And there you go, all set. So if you're new to grids, what the grid does is to simply control light spill. So if you don't see the white, that's when the light is not spilling. So right now there's no light here. As soon as you see the white there, that's when you actually see the light. Over here, no spill. Right there, spill. Now here's the part that matters the most, performance. I'm actually being lit right now by the very light and the very soft box that they make, as you can see. So right now the soft box is about five feet from me. I can actually touch the soft box right here. So we're gonna go through the app, but it's not gonna take a long time. But this particular part of the video, I know it's boring, but you definitely want to check this out here if you want to pair these lights without any frustration. And as far as I could experience right now, this app does not crash, does not freeze. It just works every time I connect this thing here, it works. So here's the name of the app and what the icon looks like. You're looking for the GC Sync in utilities. So on master control, everything that you do here, such as turning off the light, turning it back on, everything is going to be as a group and accept the color temperature because this one is a daylight only. So even if you alter the color temperature, this is not going to be altered, but it still works except the color temperature. So here's some shortcuts, 2700 Kelvin to 6500 degrees Kelvin. The N slash K means 2700, 3300, 4000, 5600 and 6500 shortcuts. And for some reason, if you want to drop the lights down to 10%, you click on the 10% right here and the N will do in increments of 25%, 50%, 75 and 100, and goes back to zero. And of course you can find it just in 1% increments. So this whole thing feels very nice. This also features a boost mode, as you can see here, you can go all the way to 150%. So adjust the exposure here. So for example, right now I'm at 100%. When I crank this up to 150, I don't think there is any difference here. So, and this is the bicolor light. So the boost mode should work regardless by having the both LEDs on at the same time, which is gonna be rendering this maybe a warmer color because it's going to be activating both LED lights, but I don't see any difference. So here's 100% and then 150. I don't see any changes in exposure whatsoever. Now to deactivate, just press the same button, it becomes a regular 0 to 100%. Now the next one next to the uh, little rocket here is the effects. Right now I'm on regular lighting mode and then you have this option right there. The next one is the fan settings. You have the super quiet mode, which is all the way on the left. Now, every time I have the chance to always crank up the fan when I don't have any audio critical material, right now, as you can see, I'm on a commercial establishment. That's gonna be some background noise. So the fan maxed out or not, to me, it doesn't matter really. Now with the fan set to the minimum, it's not going to be a problem at all with the audio. And also other YouTube creators have already demonstrated that they can't even, even hear the fan. So trust me, this is not gonna be a problem whatsoever, even if the microphone is like this close to the light no problem but again i usually like to crank it up to uh, make sure the light always runs as cool as possible and the next one is to actually pair the application this is where i was struggling a little bit even though it is a simple process but you know you have to make sure that this light is actually turned on 10 seconds here as as it says here on the application so it's gonna show you the instructions how to do it but still takes a little bit of finesse in doing that so I'm gonna show you the colors real quick again. So 2700 Kelvin looks like this, and then 3300, 4000, 5600, and 6500. 
Now the look of the colors also depends what color profile of the camera you have. All those things can also contribute to, you know, rendering the color temperature of whatever is hitting your face right now. And also in post-production, depending on what kind of LUTs they use, if you use any, if you shoot on C-Log in case of Canon here or regular, everything alters the color or the end result, no matter what accuracy this light has. Now, of course, these lights, they don't feature green magenta correction because they're not RGB lights. But by just eyeballing, I can already tell that the bike color is slightly, a tiny little bit towards green and the daylight is slightly towards magenta even though they are the same light, but what's in the front here is different. So let's say they want to tap here where it says by color, right? So by just tapping, all you see is this here. There's nothing else. You press on hold and then you're able to either delete the light or you can actually click in here and you can also rename the thing. Now I'm going to delete the by color light. So tap and hold, click on the red X, it's gone. So here's the thing, I just deleted these lights here, right? So you can still control the lights anyway by turning them off, turning them on, altering the color temperature and all. But the only difference is you can no longer control the lights separately. So right now I just have this light completely shut off and I only have the uh, bicolor light on. So I'm gonna click on the uh, bottom plus sign here. And then I'm gonna name this as bicolor. And then hit okay. And there it is. Now it works, there you go. See how easy that is? So you can con still control the uh, color temperature, do your business here, so it's that simple to connect the light. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pair this light right here, make sure you wake it up. So within 10 seconds, let's click on the uh, plus here, so daylight. Then hit okay, and let me see if that's gonna work. Yes, it's already working, it's that simple. So this app is actually very nice. Then again, you can actually either control the bike color only or whatever name you want to do, right? Or this particular one here. Or if you press on a master, you can actually control them both. They were saying that there's a way to update the firmware on these lights. I do not see it because all I see is the language here and nothing else. Maybe on another update, maybe they will do that because I would like to update the firmware on these lights. So hopefully they're going to be actually releasing this on the next update here. And that's the end of my review. I hope you find the contents helpful. All I'm trying to do here is to help you guys decide what gear would be best for you to make a purchase of whatever it is they want to buy. And also, please help share, like, and subscribe to this channel. That also helps me a ton here. And I also have affiliated links with BH and Amazon if you want to buy this from me. It does not alter the price. The only thing that happens here is that it tells BH and Amazon that somebody bought something from me. And again, that helps the channel. So once again, thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you next time.